So I know there's a lot of people looking for lemonade stock right now, and I've spent probably over a thousand hours researching this company over the last four years. I've been to both their investor days. I've interviewed both their CEOs. I want to give my quick overview for newcomers to the stock on why I feel this is a great investment. Oh, nothing on my channel is personal financial advice, but I hope you get value out of this. Because I still believe Lemonade stock, even after the massive run in recent months, could still be a 100x opportunity over the coming decades. So first of all, what is Lemonade? They're an insurance company. The insurance market is a massive market, something like $6 trillion plus right now, projected to continue to grow, maybe by 2030, be eight to $9 trillion market. Absolutely massive, massive, massive market. Lemonade, they sell renters insurance, homeowners, car, and pet insurance. They're really trying to rethink insurance from the ground up, saying forget everything you know about insurance. Your first question might be, how is Lemonade different than a legacy insurance company? How are they any different? If you think about most insurers, they're generally very, very similar. It's kind of a commoditized product that they sell. So they say, well, how could Lemonade be any different? The key thing is that they are built from the ground up on a fully digital platform with the ideal ideal in mind. I'm not going to read every bit of text here. This was a Twitter post. I could link it down below in the description, but or you could pause the video and read it as we go through. But being fully, fully digital has a lot of qualitative advantages. You can be way more efficient in administration. You can be efficient in expansion. You don't even need brick and mortar shops. They expand a new country, expand into Europe with not a single employee in a country. You can have lowered catastrophic risks. You can also prevent fraud better because everything's digitally recorded. You can detect fraud in more systematic ways. Also, things are measurable. Every interaction a customer has with you through all time, through the app, through the website, you can measure that and understand a lot more little details about them than you would otherwise. That can lead to nuanced data from better underwriting. Thousands of little signals that the customers may provide you, even just when they're signing up for insurance, whether they read the fine print or not, skipped over it, where did they sign up, what was the Google search keyword that landed them there to Lemonade Insurance. All of these can point Thousands of signals like that can make a better underwriting profile of a potential customer. Better underwriting just means you understand their, how risky or less risky of a person they are. Because obviously as an insurance company, you want the less risky people, you're even willing to offer them better, cheaper prices because they'll still make better profit than the people that are high risk and are much more likely to have something go wrong and file a claim. Being fully, fully digital, they also have a niche insurance product so that you can really go into unloved product lines such as renter's insurance, head insurance is one they're really growing into, even thing, weird things like e-bike insurance. You could have really specific new products you could even roll out. You get better understanding of customers because they're bringing in customers early. So 90% of Lemonade's customers are first-time insurance buyers. 90% of them. So you get these customers early in life. Over time, you can kind of see, are they a good customer? Are they a great customer, a poor customer? Are they high risk, low risk? And you can get to that point before you so before you decide to sell them to the higher premium product lines like car and homeowners insurance. Of course, then you can bundle products as a customer comes in the door early. They like this digital in infrastructure, the system that they're using. Over time, you can then bundle products to them. You can be super lean, super nimble. You can make changes to your entire tech stack rapidly. You can make multiple changes a day to a single product or whatever product you want because everything is fully digital, seamless. And customers are happier. Customers that are digitally native, uh, if you're a millennial like me or younger, you expect things to be in a digital system. So faster and easier process, claims are easier, administration of count is easier. They have a net promoter score of 70, 4.9 stars. And this was, you know, a year ago I wrote this, so it's probably more now, but 4.9 on 70,000 reviews on the App Store. So you get a whole bunch of qualitative advantages from building things with this ideal in mind on a fully digital platform. And this manifests itself, especially in some of the unloved products like pet insurance, so Lemonade, if you look at their pet insurance, they have the best rates in the nation for lemonade for dog and for cats. They have some of the best pricing available. Again, the customers are as happier, as happier, happier than any other insurance provider. Same with renters insurance. Renters, they have they average about $14 a month versus an overall average the rest of the nation of US of $18 a month. But you can get even still get 
pricing as low as $5 a month, <laughs> depending on what kind of coverage you want. So they're serving these customers that have very, very small coverage needs and still serving them efficiently. And you might say, oh, well, they must have really poor loss ratio. Loss ratio just meaning the percentage of premiums that are taken in that are paid out as claims. You must say, oh, the loss ratio must be really high because they're not charging enough. Not true. If we look from Q3 last quarter, the loss ratio by product type for pet insurance, it was 71%, still a very strong number. For homeowners, multi peril this is a mixture of home and renters. They kind of bundled them together. Uh, that's 69% last quarter. If you look, though, at just at renters, this was going back to Q2 of 2023, it was as low as 47%. So even though they're offering it for $5 a month to people, they can administrate it super efficiently they can they literally have ais that can assess your claim decide whether it's a valid claim or not whether there's any risk of fraud and then pay you out within three seconds and lemonades employees don't even touch it and so that part of the equation means that they can drive this number down to be really really have the best pricing possible make the people happier and still have a very profitable product. Now, if we look at a graph of each product line and the premiums or enforce premiums is what Lemonade defines it as. That's just the amount of premium that customers are paying at any given time for an annualized basis across the product lines. You can see homeowners multi parallel. So this is a mixture of homeowners and renters. That's continuing to climb. Renters would continue to climb rapidly. Actually, homeowners has been declining, and I'll explain why in a moment. But pet insurance has also been rapidly growing. 53% year over year should continue to rise because, again, they really dominate inside of renters, inside of pet insurance. So that's going to continue to dominate. And now car, this red line on the graph, has been basically flat. And now we're going to see that we're at a spot where this is going to see an inflection point and car starts to rise. Now, why has car and why has home specifically been so poor in their growth in the last few years here? Looking at this graph, pull up this table. This was from Q3 of 2024. And we look at the loss ratio. Again, for loss ratio, you want that number to be lower. That means that the, you're paying out less claims to the customer. If you look at loss ratio of car, it was as high as 104%, meaning you're actually losing money on the premium that comes in. You're paying more out than you're actually bringing in. And it went, it's been trending now 99%, 95%, 92%. And they said during this Q3 earnings call that there was some one-time trade-offs that would have if not been there, though it won't be there now in future quarters, that this number would have been 10% better. So I'm actually thinking their car loss ratio for new customers or customers are signing up is probably in the low 80% or even the 70%. So it's really is go time for a car to start ramping up in a profitable way. That's why if you look at this graph, car has been flatlined because its loss ratio just hasn't been good enough. Meanwhile, they don't show us homeowners, but homeowners has probably been bad, might even still be over 100%. They kind of lump it in with renters because renters so good. Homeowners are so bad, the two combined, it's still improving. But my guess is homeowners isn't great. Now, why has car and homeowners been so poor? It's in part, big part, because this graph right here, inflation, as we all know, if anyone who lives on planet Earth here knows inflation, especially in the United States, has been poor through COVID, been very bad through COVID. So it's spiked up here. And inflation for an insurance company, it's really bad because you sell a policy, you expect you're gonna, it's going to cost you a certain amount to, say, replace a home or replace a car or fix a car. And then COVID happened, supply chain issues happened, inflation went up and pricing went up, and that made everything more expensive. So as an insurance company, it's really, really challenging because then you're still, you expected a certain amount, you expect inflation to stay at 2% or less, and now suddenly it's at 8 9%. Well, you're paying so much more out in claims to help cover the costs or da of damages that people may have. It's also been problematic for, for Lemonade because, and all insurance companies, because 
In the United States, if you want to change your pricing of, say, your car insurance, homeowner's insurance, a regulator has to approve that and say, yes, it's okay that you up the price or increase the price. And regulators are slow. They drag their feet. There's political incentives and bureaucracy involved in that. And so it's a slow process to slowly up those prices. And as those prices increase, then your loss ratios decrease or improve. So, and that's across the board. That's that's something every single insurer is struggling with in the United States over the last two years. It's not just Lemonade, but we're seeing that massive improvement now as rates have come online and as inflation starts to cool down. But as car ramps up, it's going to be a massive. So they gave us this table as well in the Q3 letter that showed the premium per customer breakdown. And you can see their overall average customer is $384. But for car specifically, a car customer has an average of $1,751, $1,751. So as car insurance now starts to ramp, it's going to be massive. We're at this massive inflection point. So their enforced premium here, this is in my Lemonade model. It's available to all my Patreon supporters. If you want to join the channel, get full access to this model. Lemonade's premium has been growing steadily. It's been growing about 20% per year for the last two years. It was growing much more rapidly before that. But almost none of the premium so far is actually in car insurance. It's only $117 million by in the next about eight, nine years or so would be the timeline. They're expecting we'll go from a hundred million car to four billion dollars ish, somewhere around there. If you look at where this graph is showing the car breakdown, car will become the biggest product and probably take up about four billion dollars over the next 10 years. So entire book right now is less than a billion. In probably you know eight nine years time, it's probably going to be four billion of cars. So maybe four five hundred million. And half of the entire book right now is going to be added on average every single year for the next eight nine years because because your car is so massive, you cross sell it to an existing customer that's a pet insurance customer, renters insurance customer. It's a huge huge effect on your entire book of business. And now these it has cars being sold at a profitable rate, probably in the high 70% of a loss ratio right now. It's going to be dramatic. You might be wondering, well why is there what makes their car product even unique? Most insurers, they sell you car insurance. It's just based on age, gender, credit score, marital status, the type of vehicle. And it's very, very general, very limited sort of individuality of pricing between each person. Everyone's kind of seen as a blank cardboard cutout. But for Lemonade, they have continuous telematics that reveal precisely the things that proxies like the above approximate so poorly. So they, they have telematics that work through a device you plug into your car as well as the different drivers in your family, the apps on their phone. Shout out to the little paper bag investor man here. I love to see that. Made me laugh so hard when someone pointed that out to me. But essentially, the average driver says, yeah, here's your cardboard cutout. You should be paying, based on these different factors, $2,300 a year. But the reality might be Jill is a distracted driver and should be paying $2,900 a month. And Jack is a careful driver and he should be paying only $1,900 a month. So a third of people they are worse than average risk and they're better off being you know, mispriced as average somewhere. And in the long run with enough Jills all going to other insurance companies, it's going to cost them more than it really should. It's going to be bad news for them. But for Lemonade, because they have this telematics inside the car, because it's proprietary how they interpret and understand the telematics data. And because the telematics is running continuously, then they can really identify that Jack is a really, really good driver. And we can even offer him $19.50 a month, uh, a year for his car insurance. He's going to be absolutely thrilled because it's $400 cheaper than the other insurer that offers him $23.48. And he's going to still going to be thrilled with the product because it's a telematics can lower premiums by 15% for two thirds of customers and by 25% for one quarter. And the common criticism that people have, they say, well, doesn't everyone do telematics? It depends on what you mean by do and telematics. So 96% of Lemonade customers are running their continuous telematics. 
and the rest of the industry, by their approximation, maybe 9% of their customers are doing that. Even by saying continuous telematics, it's even less than that because there's companies like Progressive. Progressive would be one of the very best insurance companies out there, especially for car telematics. If you get Progressive telematics, they measure your car driving for, I think it's a few weeks. And then after those weeks are done, finish measuring your driving and you get your rate and that's it. Versus Lemonade that has this continuous telematics running forever indefinitely from the device in your car, from your phone. And so for a year after a th their first 30 day snapshot, maybe like something like Progressive does, the median score changes by 23%. So you can have significant scores in how a person drives and how you're ranking them if you look at them longer, which Lemonade is doing. And if you're wondering how Progressive did just over the last many decades as they rolled out a, a functional telematics that's really one of the best in the industry, you can see in the year 1984, they were 27 cents a share and they are now $266 a share, a 98,000% gain. I would say it's worked out and I believe Lemonade's product is going to be superior to even Progressive. Now let's dig a little deeper into Lemonade's financial financials and their unit economics. The biggest thing that Lemonade optimizes around is what they call their LTV to CAC or lifetime value to customer acquisition costs. You can calculate LTV to CAC with this equation right here. LTV is equal to the sum of all the gross profits added up over time from a customer base over many over the lifetime of a cohort of customers. I'm not going to dig into it really deep here, but the the variables that go into this are the premium per customer initial your gross loss ratio or your loss ratio of your customers over assumed to be over your lifetime your annual dollar retention which is how much money is churning away as customers leave from a cohort as well as as customers upgrade or increase over time time value of money saying what's the value of all these future cash flows now if we discount it back to today and then our customer acquisition cost which is a different calculation but i calculated that in my model which i know to be very accurate 190 dollars roughly it was last quarter that can vary between usually between 100 to probably 200 dollars per customer that they acquire you plug in the latest numbers from you know last quarter or what you think they might be going forward and you get ltv of 725 divided by 190 and ltv to cac of 3.8 basically means for the money that they invest in growth through spending on advertising they're going to bring in right now present value about 3.8 times that money if you look at a graph of ltv to cac for trailing 12 months you can see it was a lower as they had less products as loss ratios were worse one one point something and then in the last year year two years really started to springboard where it went from two to three to th high threes and depending on what assumptions you put into the equation right here you can greatly affect whether it's three four five ltv to cac ratio but i'm thinking it's going to consistently stay above three for the foreseeable future. And then the other side of their unit economics would be all the other expenses that they have. So all the operating expenses. I have a graph here. This would actually include the CAC spend or growth, customer acquisition growth spend. And you can see their enforced premium is rising at a steady pace, even though over the last several years, operating expenses have been held to a flat line. Lemonade also shows this in their investor day presentation. Presentation. Operating expenses, excluding customer acquisition cost, has actually dropped by $2 million from 87 to 85 million per quarter as IFP rose from 600 to 889 million. And if you watch the Investor Day presentation, it's really incredible how they are building the company to be super super autonomous what they call the autonomous organization where they can scale this top line more and more and more and more with little to no increase in the operating expenses i've laid this out on twitter a number of times but it's not complicated if your ltv to cac is three plus and everything outside of cac is stable and forecast to be stable it's not hard to forecast where this is going i mean eventually you're going to keep investing in growth you're going to spend heavily in growth now it's going to hurt your financial right now but then those payback period of your lifetime value is going to keep stacking on top of each other as cohorts stack and you're going to be suddenly become very 
very profitable, what I call the hockey stick of profit is coming, which I forecast in my model that adjusted EBITDA as a percentage of gross earned premium. Right now it's been negative, but I, I assume somewhere around 2026 range, that's going to flip to being positive, which is also what the guidance management has reiterated again and again. And even in the recent investor day presentation, they expect to be adjusted EBITDA profitable 2026 and then gap profitable 2027, then massively profitable beyond that. There were the lemonades at $49 a share for the last oh, three years or so traded between $20, $15 a share, even when as low as $10, $11 a share at one point. And then in just the last few months, it skyrocketed from $16 a share all the way up to $49 a share. And you say, well, what's it worth now relative? What, what should it be worth? So quick way to do this. If they grow to 10 billion IFP in nine years, which is what they're predicting they will do from their lemonade investor day and say they make, they get reach a 10% profit margin, 1 billion in profit they make and say the market gives them a 20 X multiple. I think these are super reasonable. If you look into the details of how the company is being built to be hyper efficient and how good their car products should be along with how good their renters pet products already are that would mean they're worth 20 billion nine years time i actually did a mistake in the math here but say you discounted that back to today what is that worth now in market cap terms or in share price terms based on that same math say they're worth you know, making a billion dollars of profit in nine years time from now, then different interest rates that you discount back, say you use a 10% discount rate, it means they're worth about eight and a half billion dollar market cap right now. Of course, they're worth 3.5 billion right now at $50 per share, which means they're worth something like $119 per share. There's no dilution in this, I'm making this really simple, but depending on what variables you put in, you can easily argue that they're worth $100 per share, $120, $150 per share right now, and that even at $50 per share, that's really, really cheap. And just to finish off this video, I tweeted this out the other day. I said, call me crazy, but I think there's a greater than 50% chance Lemonade becomes a $100 billion company someday. And why could I even say that? That sounds ridiculous when they're $3.5 billion right now. Saying, if you watch Investor Day 2 presentation again, you think carefully about the moats I outline in this video, which I'll link above, and think carefully about how Lemonade has feedback loops to ever improve all systems and underwriting. And you think carefully about how ambitious they are I mean, they want to be a global iconic brand. That's what they're planning to do. Then it's obvious where this is headed. It's a hundred billions plus plus eventually. It just requires careful thinking. It will be a redo of the progressive story that went from a tiny company to a massive $150 billion company again, except you add in inflation in there and you add in doing it even better. I think it's gonna be hundreds of billions of dollars and you fast forward say 15 years, 20 years, something like that. And so the returns even from I think the $50 price right now is in my mind are gonna be stellar. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, it's in the bag.